Hi, I'm Bob. Welcome back to the Solutions to Microeconomics course. We will solve the problems for the third part of Chapter Four. It is about the effects of a price increase on the demand. We will learn how to decompose the total effect of a price change into the substitution effect and the income effect. The link to the introductory microeconomics course is in the description below. You can find helpful information on the topic before you try the exercises. I use the textbook Microeconomics Theory and Applications with Calculus, the fifth edition, by Professor Jeffrey Pelov. Let's get started. Here is exercise three point one. Under what conditions does the income effect reinforce the substitution effect? Under what conditions does it have an offsetting effect? If the income effect more than offsets the substitution effect for good, what do we call that good? In the figure, illustrate that the income effect can more than offset the substitution effect. We can draw the demand curve diagram to show the substitution and income effects, or we can use the Slutsky equation. For a normal good, the income effect and the substitution effect move in the same direction. For example, an increase in the price. Reduces the compensated demand for the good because of the substitution effect. Due to the relative price of the good becomes higher, the substitution effect is negative. The income effect is also negative because the purchasing power falls. This is the case for a normal good. The income effect reinforces the substitution effect. If it is an inferior good, the income effect moves in the opposite direction of the substitution effect. The consumer purchases more of the inferior good as the income falls. The income effect is positive, while the substitution effect is negative. The income effect offsets the substitution effect. If the income effect is larger than the substitution effect, then we call it a given good. As the price of a given good increases, the demand for the good rises because the income effect more than offsets the substitution effect. The graph shows the substitution and income effects of a given good. An increase in the price P1 causes the budget line to rotate from L1 to L2. The imaginary dashed budget line has the same slope as L2 and is tangent to the original indifference curve I1. The movement of the optimal bundle from E1 to E2 is the total effect of the price increase. The total effect can be decomposed into the substitution effect, the movement from E1 to E star, and the income effect, the movement from E star to E2. The given good must be an inferior good. Its income effect moves in the opposite direction of the substitution effect. When the income effect is larger than the substitution effect, the inferior good is also called a given good. Let's do exercise three point two. The consumer spends his money on food and operas. Food is an 
inferior good for the consumer. Does he view an opera performance as an inferior or normal good? Why? So a possible income consumption curve for the consumer in a diagram. Let's look at the income elasticities of the demand equation. The weighted sum of a consumer's income elasticities equals one. Theta is the budget share on food, and one minus theta is the budget share on operas. C one is the income elasticity of demand for food. It is negative because food is an inferior good for the consumer. Then C two could not be negative; it must be positive. Otherwise, the equation could not hold. So, opera performance is a normal good. We can draw the indifference curve budget constraint diagram to show the income consumption curve. As income increases, the budget line shifts to the right. The highest possible indifference curves are tangent to the budget lines at E1, E2, and E3. As income increases. The demand for food Q1 decreases at a particular part, as the movement from E2 to E3 shows. In this range, the food is an inferior good. Its consumption reduces as income increases. If we look at the whole range, the income consumption curve for food is backward bending. Let's solve exercise three point three. The consumer eats eggs and toast for breakfast and insists on having three pieces of toast for every two eggs he eats. Derive his utility function. If the price of eggs increases, but we compensate the consumer to make him just as happy as he was before the price change. What happens to his consumption of X? Draw a graph and explain your diagram. Does the change in his consumption reflect a substitution or an income effect? For the consumer, X and toast are perfect complements. The consumer eats them in a fixed proportion. The utility function is as follows: Q1 is X. Q2 is toast. The parameter i equals three and j equals two because two eggs and three pieces of toast give him the same utility if they are eaten together. The indifference curves are right angles. If the price of eggs increases, the budget line rotates from. L1 to L2. If we compensate him so that he is as happy as before, the budget line should go through the original bundle E1, as the dashed budget line L star shows. It indicates that there is no substitution effect of the price increase. After the price change, the consumer's optimal bundle is E2, where the highest possible indifference curve I2 touches his new budget line L2. The total effect from E1 to E2 equals the income effect. That is, the consumption change reflects only the income effect of the price change. Let's solve exercise three point four. Use a figure to illustrate the effect of a change in the price of alcohol in the application substituting marijuana for alcohol. Label the figure using the numbers for typical female from the application. Is the percentage change in marijuana consumption 
due to a pure substitution effect, or does it reflect both substitution and income effects? We put alcohol on the horizontal axis and marijuana on the vertical axis. The decrease in the cost of buying alcohol rotates the budget line from L1 to L2. The imaginary budget line L star has the same slope as the new budget line L2 and is tangent to the old indifference curve I1 to keep the consumer at her original utility. We focus on the consumption change in marijuana on the vertical axis. The change in Q2 due to the movement from E1 to E star is the substitution effect. The movement from E star to E2 is the income effect. We assume marijuana is a normal good. The total effect is the sum of the substitution effect and the income effect. It falls by 17%. In this diagram, the consumption change in marijuana reflects both substitution and income effects. Let's find the answer to exercise 3.5. The New York State cigarette tax applies equally to low quality and high quality cigarettes. However, the state cannot collect the tax on sales on Indian reservations. Researchers found that people purchase a large share of low quality cigarettes on Indian reservations compared to purchases elsewhere in New York. Why? The horizontal axis measures the low quality cigarettes and the vertical axis measures the high-quality cigarettes. On Indian reservations, the price of the low-quality cigarettes Q1 is P1, and the price of the high-quality cigarettes Q2 is P2. In other places, the price of Q1 is P1 plus S, and the price of Q2 is P2 plus S, where S is the tax. We know that P1 is less than P2. So the price ratio P1 over P2 in the Indian reservations is lower than that elsewhere in New York. This means the relative price of low quality cigarettes is lower on India reservations than elsewhere. The budget line in India reservations L1 is flatter than that elsewhere. Therefore, people buy a large share of low quality cigarettes on Indian reservations compared to elsewhere in New York. The corresponding optimal consumption bundles are E1 on Indian reservations and E2 elsewhere. Let's do exercise 3.6. Draw a figure to illustrate the answer given in solve problem 4.5. Using math and a figure to show whether applying an Avaloran tax rather than a specific tax changes the analysis. Solved problem 4.5 is about the sales of the first quality plates and the second quality plates in the outlet store next to the factory and the regular retail stores elsewhere. The firm sells a relatively large share of second quality plates in the outlet store while it sells many more first quality plates in the retail stores. The key to the answer is the relative price. The second quality plates are relatively cheaper in the nearby outlet than in the faraway retail stores. We draw a diagram to show it. The horizontal axis measures the second quality plates 
and the vertical axis measures the first quality plates. In the outlet store next to the factory, the relative price of second quality plates to first quality plates is P1 over P2. In the retail stores far away from the factory, the price of the plates includes the shipping cost S. The relative price of the second quality plates is P1 plus S over P2 plus S. The second quality plates become relatively more expensive. So the budget line for the retail stores L2 is steeper than that for the outlet store L1. The optimal consumption bundle is E1 for the nearby outlet, where consumers purchase a large share of second quality plates. The movement from E1 to E star is the substitution effect due to the relative price change. The movement from E star to E2 is the income effect due to the fall in purchasing power. At the new optimal consumption bundle E2, consumers buy many more first quality plates. The substitution effect is much larger than the income effect, so the retail store sells more first quality plates than the nearby outlet store. A small income effect is due to a small budget share spent on the good. We can see it from the Slutsky equation. An Avaloran tax or a specific tax changes the relative price in the same way. It makes little difference. Thank you so much for solving the exercises with me today. See you tomorrow in the next part in Chapter 4. Goodbye. Thank you for watching this video and subscribing to my YouTube channel. See you next time.